Today we're starting our unit on area and first we're going to talk about areas of triangles and quadrilaterals. Now you already know several formulas for finding area and we're going to learn some new handy dandy shortcut formulas today. Let's start with the area of a square and we've known this for many many years the area of a square is the square of the length of a side or a equals s squared been using that forever but now what you probably didn't know is that if i know the length of the diagonal of a square so for instance here's my square here's my diagonal then i can use this formula a equals one half the length of the diagonal squared to find the area so I don't have to use my time finding the side length so for instance let's take this square here we got a diagonal length of 4 times the square root of 3 we know this is a square because they told us so we're just going to use this new little formula that we learned above that the area is 1 half of 4 times the square root of 3 squared and that's going to give me 24 square feet. And that's really nice because if I had had to find the length of the side, what would I do? Well, I know this is 45, this is 45. So I would have had to say, okay, the side length is 4 times the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 2. And then square that and or, or rationalize it. This just saves us time. If we know the length of the diagonal in the square, we can find the area by squaring the length of the diagonal and multiplying it by one half. Okay, area of a rectangle. We've known always that the area equals base times height, or most often we probably said length times width, but it's the same thing. Okay, so how about a parallelogram? Same thing. We're going to use the same formula to find the area of a parallelogram. Area is base times height. So what you got to remember, though, with respect to a parallelogram is that you have to use the height that's associated with the base. Remember, the height has to be perpendicular. Must be perpendicular. So the height and base can change. Like I could use, if I decided I wanted to use this side here for the base, then I would have to find the height that's perpendicular to that base. So that's the thing that you got to keep in mind when you're dealing with parallelograms. So let's look at these two examples. What is the area of each parallelogram? Well, since they've dropped this height here of four inches, and it's perpendicular to this side of the parallelogram, I know that that side has to be my base. So I'm just going to use my little formula, area equals base times height, and I get an area of 20 square inches. Okay, here I can see that my height, and this one's got to be the height, why? Because it's perpendicular to this base. Okay, so I'm going to use my formula, area is base times height, the, the base is 2, the height is 3.5, and that gives me an area of 7 centimeters squared. So for parallelogram and rectangle, area is base times height. Okay, how about the area of a triangle? You learned this probably in fifth grade, the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height, nothing new there, but now we got a couple of new ones that you probably haven't seen before. If I have an equilateral triangle, I can find its area by using this formula here. Area is the square root of 3 over 4 times the side length squared. And of course, because it's an equilateral triangle, all the side lengths are the same. So that's a good one, and you really, really need to remember that because you're going to use that a whole lot in this unit. Okay, then if we have a right isosceles triangle, so let's say, for instance, here's our right isosceles triangle, and if we know the length of the hypotenuse, then we can find its area by using the formula area equals one-fourth times the length of the hypotenuse squared. We won't use that one quite as much as we'll use number one there. Number one, we're going to use that over and over. So commit that to your memory. Okay, two examples here. Find the area of a right isosceles triangle with a hypotenuse length of five. Okay, well, 
if I got a hypotenuse length of 5, I'm just going to use this little formula right here. Area is 1 fourth times the hypotenuse length squared, which would be 5 squared is 25. So I would get 25, sorry, lost my place. I would get 20. Sorry about that. Had a little interruption. So I would get 25 fourths, and let's see, we got centimeters. So that would be square centimeters. See how much easier that is? I mean, I could use one half base times height, uh, but I would have to find the lengths of these legs here, and, and right here. I would have to find these, and given this new little formula, I don't have to do that. Okay, how about the next one? Find the area of an equilateral triangle with a height of sticks. Okay, we want to sketch it here. Equilateral triangle. We know its height is 6 feet. How are we going to find the area? Well, I want to use my little formula, the new one that I learned, that says that's going to be the square root of 3 over 4 s squared. Problem is, I don't know what the side length is. How am I going to find that? Well, it's an equilateral triangle, so what do I know? I know that all these angles here were 60 degrees, and now that I've bisected this top angle, that makes it 30 degrees. So, ah, I got a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So, if the long side is 6, then the short side right here is going to be 6 divided by the square root of 3, which is going to be 2 times the square root of 3. Hope you remember your radical simplification. You might need to go back and review that. All right, so if this little piece right here is 2 times the square root of 3, then the whole side length is twice that. So I end up with the square root of 3 over 4 times 4 times the square root of 3 squared. And what does that give me? Square root of 3 over 4 times 48. And so I end up with 12 times the square root of 3 feet squared. All right, could I have used area as 1 half base times height? Sure. I already knew the height. It was 6. Now I know the base is 4 times the square root of 3 because I found it. The height is 6, so that gives me 24 times a half, which also gives me 12 times the square root of 3. So either one works, but we want to practice using our new formulas. All right, what do we have now? The area of a trapezoid is one half the product of the height and the sum of the bases. So one half the height times the sum of the bases. So here's an example. What is the area of the trapezoid? So let's write our formulas. If you'll write your formula every time you start to work these problems, you'll commit them to memory pretty quickly. One half the height times the sum of the bases. What do I not have? Oh, I don't know what the height is, so i got to figure that out. Okay, here's the height. Drop that perpendicular. That gives me a nice 30, 60, 90 triangle. That's 30 degrees right there. So, let's see. That would make this 5. And that would have to, if this piece is 5, because now I've created a rectangle right here, right? If that's 5, that would make this short side here 2, which would make my height 2 times the square root of 3, right? Got to remember those special right triangles. So area is 1 half. I just found the height. It's 2 times the square root of 3. The sum of the bases, 5 on the top. 7 on the bottom, so I end up with the square root of 3 times 12 square meters, area of a trapezoid. All right, area of a rhombus or a kite. We'll use the same formula right here. Area is 1 half the product of the length of the diagonals. That's easy enough, right? Just got to know what the lengths of the diagonals are. So let's do this example. We got a rhombus. Side lengths of 10. If the longer diagonal is 16, so I know that's got to be this one, 
the longer diagonal is 16, what is the area of the rhombus? Okay, let me write my formula. 1 half D1 times D2. So I've got one diagonal. We know it's 16. What I don't know is the length of the other diagonal. So let me draw that in here. There's my other diagonal. Hmm, how could I find that length? What do I know about the diagonals of a rhombus? They're perpendicular, right? And I also know that they bisect each other, correct? The, bi the diagonals of any parallelogram bisect each other, which means if the long one, the long diagonal is 16, then this part of it is 8. So, ah, look what I have there. I actually have a Pythagorean triple, don't I? A 3, and this would be, this side here would be the 4, and the hypotenuse would be the 5. So that means that little piece of the triangle right there is going to be 6 centimeters long. So I know the entire diagonal length has to be twice that, which is 12. Okay, and when I do that multiplication, 8 times 12, that gives me 96 square centimeters. Okay, what do we have next? Area congruence postulate, which simply says if two polygons are congruent, then they're going to have the same areas. Area addition postulate says the area of a region is the sum of the areas of its non-overlapping parts. So let's look at this example here. Now, it's a trapezoid. So I just learned that the area of a trapezoid is one half the height times the sum of the bases. So I could use that formula here, but I think what they want me to do is find it by finding the areas of the regions. So let's see if we do that. So if I if I drop that there, if I drop that height there, then this gives me a 30, 60, 90 triangle right here. Okay, the hypotenuse is 20, which means this short side would have to be 10. And then if I drop another altitude here, what do I have? Well, if this is 10, I know this is going to be, this is now going to be a 45, this triangle, let me draw it in green. This is a little bit confusing. This triangle right here will be a 45, 45, 90 triangle. How do I know that? Because this angle here at D was 135, right? I made a right angle right here, which means there are 45 degrees left to go right here. So it's a 45, 45, 90, which means... This side also has to be 10, which means this little piece right here has to be 5. So you can now find the areas of the two triangles and the area of the rectangle that's in the middle. And we're just going to use this little formula here. You can try it out. If I find the area of, I think it's this triangle. Well, shoot, let's just do it. The area of this triangle over here is one half base times height, which is one half. Let's see, I gotta find what my base is here. If my short side is 10, then this long side is gonna be 10 times the square root of three. So that's gonna be 10 square root of three times 10. So that's gonna be 50 times the square root of 3, the area of the rectangle is just going to be 10 times 5, right? So it's going to be 50. And the area of the other triangle is going to be 1 half base times height. Well, my base and my height are both 10, so it's going to be 1 half of 10 times 10, which is also 50. So if I added all these together, the total area would be 100 plus 50 times the square root of 3. What do we got here? Inches. Square inches. 
So I would challenge you guys to use my area of a trapezoid formula and make sure that we do get the same area when we do it both ways. Go ahead and do that. It won't hurt you, I promise. Okay, what you got left are some practice problems. Let's see, there's quite a few of them. And so what I'm going to do is, as always, pause here, let you work those. I'll put the answers up for you. If there are some that you don't understand, please put a star on them and we will go over them in class tomorrow. Okay, these problems are pretty straightforward. All you have to do is apply the formulas that I've talked to you about today. So what I would like you to do, I'm not going to talk through all these, so just quickly check your answers. 180 units squared for the first one. The height of the triangle is 6 units. The area, oh find the area, oh not the height, that was if there were more problems there. So the area of this rectangle is 32 units squared the high, what are we looking for? Area, the area of the triangle, 72 units squared. Area of the trapezoid, just applying the formula, 70 units squared. Area of the, that's a rhombus because all the sides are congruent, 176 units squared. Area of the parallelogram, no, we're finding the height, given the area, 10 units. And the area of the kite, 360 units squared, and that's all we got for today. See you next time.